Hey guys, you're watching Phone Rena's in-depth video review of the T-Mobile G2, which is available right now for the contract price of $199, and it's the true successor to the original G1, which launched uh, a couple years ago, and it was the very first Android-powered smartphone. This is kind of similar to it with its landscape uh, keyboard, and the unique thing about the G2 is the fact that it's the very first handset to offer HSPA Plus connectivity. Design-wise, we're happy to say that the G2 is one of the better-built HTC handsets of late just because it employs a lot of uh, premium materials with its construction. From afar, it does look like a Nexus 1, but it's a little bit bulkier and thicker just because of the inclusion of the uh, landscape keyboard. We like the fact that it has that, that brushed aluminum finish to the sides and even on the rear cover, giving it that durability feel, and it's complemented well with the soft-touch coating on the sides of the handset. Again, it's a little bit heavier just because of the choice of materials, and the only concern that we have is, of course, course the uh, the hinge mechanism just opening closer after a period of time it just doesn't seem like it's going to handle well in the long run so when you turn on the handset you're going to be greeted to its 3.7 inch uh, WVGA capacitive touchscreen so that's 480 by 800 pixels and honestly it doesn't differ from any other handsets we've seen before this like the uh, Nexus one even enjoyed incredible it has some sharp looking text very easy to read on top of that it is able to radiate some decent colors so pretty rich too but not as saturated as something like a super AMOLED panel it's very uh, responsive to the touch and we didn't have too much issues just navigating between the home pa home screens here Out Outdoors though, you might, it's going to have a little bit of a difficult time just because it's not as bright as we would have liked and you're going to have some difficulty seeing it in direct sunlight. Right below the uh, touch screen, you have your usual set of capacitor buttons. You have the home, menu, back, and search. Thankfully, they're spaced far away from the side, so you're not going to have too much accidental impresses with it. And instead of the trackball on the Nexus 1, it features a optical trackpad, more, more recent to some other handsets. It does a good job and offers a pretty decent tactile response when you press it down. On the left hand side you have just the uh, volume rocker here, it's pretty thin but it's easy to press and has a good feedback to it. The micro USB port for charging and connecting to a computer. On the right hand side you simply have a two level shutter key and here is the latch for the back cover to remove the, uh, the uh, casing. And on the top you simply have a 3.5mm headset jack, dedicated power button, very easy to press. And on the back you're greeted to its uh, 5 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash, speakerphone right there. And of course when you remove the back cover it's going to give you access to the battery and SIM card slot. As we mentioned earlier, we have some concerns with the opening and closing mechanism with the handset. Now, initially out of the box, it's pretty snappy and responsive, but you can get it to expose just a little bit, stay upright, and makes you wonder what will happen down the road with it. Thankfully, though, the uh, keyboard itself is a fantastic experience, uh, kind of reminiscent of the HTC Touch Pro 2. Buttons are raised from the surface, they're decently sized, and they have a pretty good tactile response when pressed. We like the fact that they include the Alt and Shift keys on the on the both sides of the of the keyboard to make it real easy to type. On top of that, you can auto assign these uh, buttons right here to do whatever you want. Under the hood, the T-Mobile G2 is powered by an 800 MHz Qualcomm MSM7230 processor with 512 megabytes of RAM. And honestly, you're not going to notice a difference between this and some of the current generation 1 GHz Snapdragon chipsets out there just because it's able to move about the home screens very fluidly with that much lag. Same thing applies when you open up the app drawer here, and you can tell um, it is pretty smooth and very responsive. It's the Android 2.2 Froyo experience that you're treated to, so you're not going to have too much customizations out of the way. And of course, it offers a lot of personalization with various live wallpapers and even widgets for you to uh, decorate the home screens. Since we're treated to the stock Android 2.2 experience, you, you get your usual set of features such as uh, support for Microsoft Exchange Server and also integration of social networking with your contacts. On top of that, there's a host of other other applications preloaded with the handset, dedicated Facebook app, the uh, Twitter app, you have even Google Goggles, Google Search, Google Sky Maps, even Google Translate, all preloaded with the device. But thankfully, it doesn't come up with too much clutter, and you could, of course, uh, supplement your apps by going to the Android market. Now, if you're more of a touch person, you're going to be satisfied with the messaging experience on the handset just because it employs swipe as an option, which is great for those who are used to this intricate method of inputting text. On top of that, you have your usual stock Android keyboard. Of course, when you flip it to landscape, you're going to get the better option. But the thing we like about it is just the fact that it's very responsive and there's not much lag uh, when you're typing up long passages of text. 
The Gmail experience, of course, very fitting for any handset running Android and offers one of the best experiences out there. The thing that we like about it is the fact that it, it um, displays your messages in threaded view, so you're not going to have too much of a problem as far as uh, reading up your conversations and offers all the essentials you'd expect out of Gmail. Some would argue that the beauty with the handset is, of course, Flash 10.1 support, just like you see on other handsets like the Motorola Droid X and even HTC Evo 4G. Of course, the uh, T-Mobile G2 offers that, but the unique thing about it is the fact that it has uh, HSPA Plus connectivity. And you can indicate that from the top here with the letter H, uh, where generally you see a 3G uh, icon. And it loaded up our page fairly quickly, a lot faster than other browsers that we checked out. And as you can tell, it's pretty decent when it comes to scrolling rate. It's pretty responsive. You could that double tap to actually zoom into a specific area and it'll automatically resize the text to fit the length of the page. You also have um, multi-touch gesture support so you can zoom in zoom out and of course you have a lot of flash based elements loading up with the uh, device so it's going to give you that rich uh, web browsing experience there's nothing really different with the music player on the G2 just because it's the uh, stock experience and it functions as it should so when you load up a song on the handset it's going to display stuff like the album cover the track title information and even on-screen controls Unfortunately though, there is no equalizer setting, so you're stuck with the same sounds from its speaker. The quality, quality of it is in fact a little bit on the poor side, kind of weak too in tone, uh, but it does definitely strain at the loudest volume setting. Since the handset packs a pretty fast processor, it's not going to have any problems as far as playing back any high resolution videos. We have one here encoded in MPEG-4 1280x720 resolution. As you could tell, it's running it very smoothly, no evidence of any lag whatsoever. On top of that, thanks to the WVGA resolution and display itself, it's able to provide a fitting uh, experience when it comes down to watching videos. When compared to other handsets on T-Mobile's lineup, the T-Mobile G2 is pretty much towards the upper end of the spectrum, but a little bit step below the uh, Samsung Vibrant with its 5 megapixel autofocus camera. Now in outdoor conditions, images have a soft look to them and colors are a little bit on the bland and neutral side. And when you take it indoors in low lighting conditions, the, the level of detail drops a little bit. And on top of that, it does look a little bit underexposed. Thankfully though, the LED flash does a great job in illuminating the shots, but it does have a little bit of difficulty when you're trying to focus. Just like other handsets, the T-Mobile G2 has the ability to shoot 720p videos and it captures it at a rate of 24 frames per second, so it does a decent job, but still the Samsung Vibrant does, does a little bit better job. Now quality though, uh, there's a little bit of artifacting going on with the videos. It does look pretty smooth and fluid for, with thanks to the uh, 24 frames per second capture rate, but uh, it doesn't offer autofocus or continuous autofocus, so if you have an image that comes into closer view, it's not going to focus in correctly. The earpiece on the G2 produces some decent sounding tones, but unfortunately though on our end, uh, there's a little bit of a static sound that can be heard in the background and especially noticeable when you set it to the highest volume setting. Voices also did sound a little bit on the hollow side. On the flip side of things, our callers did say our voices did sound a little bit natural, but when you switched over to using the speakerphone on the handset, unfortunately though it did sound extremely muffled. We didn't have any problems with the handset when it comes to retaining a solid connection to the network and as you can see right now, it's holding a good amount of signal strength to the network and we are also covered with HSPA Plus connectivity here. Now when it comes to battery life, it's pretty average of any other smartphone out there. Some light users will probably be able to get out at least one day's use out of the handset, but heavy users will probably want to keep a charger close by to uh, charge as much as they can. So you want to optimize things such as the uh, brightness level or even your emails just to optimize the battery life itself. Since this is the true successor to the original T-Mobile G1, we're pretty satisfied with the overall performance we got out of the G2. We like its industrial design. It's definitely by far one of the better built HTC handsets of late just because of the choice premium materials that it decided to employ. And on top of that, we like the keyboard. It's definitely one of the more usable ones out there with its tactile keys. The only concern that we have, obviously, is just the hinge mechanism. How long, uh, if it's going to hold up in the long term, in fact. Right now, it does look pretty snappy, but it does make you wonder what's going to happen down the road with it. Aside from that, uh, you also have the stock Android 2.2 experience and also that 800 megahertz Qualcomm processor on board. But the biggest star of the show is, of course, uh, HSPA Plus connectivity. And we have to say it does a better job from what we experience here in our area, in the greater Philadelphia area, compared to uh, the HTC Evo 4G on Sprint's network. We're just impressed with the type of speeds we're able to get with the handset. 
And of course, when it's priced at two hundred dollars, it's a perfect addition to T-Mobile's lineup and offers a lot of nice things over the Samsung Vibrant, which is its closest competitor. So, if you'd like to learn more about the T-Mobile G2 or for all the latest cell phones reviews, new specs, and information, you can check us out at PhoneRena.com.